Okay, um, welcome to my film study vlog number five. Um, I've done, I basically have been exploring the video capabilities of my new uh, Fujifilm X-T4. Um, it has pretty advanced, improved um, autofocus. Um, the autofocus is a little bit better than the X-T3, um, which I also shot with. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm pushing the lenses, the settings into kind of extremes, um, just to find my boundaries, but also I've not really done, uh, professional editing and, uh, filmmaking stuff. I mostly shoot still photography. So I'm, um, kind of exploring ways to, um, express what I see in uh, Muay Thai 
um, not only my wife Sylvie's Muay Thai, but just Muay Thai in general. Um, in my still photography, if you follow me on Instagram uh, or um, Twitter, the uh, my influences for still photography are f cinematic, like Tarkovsky. Um, Tarkovsky really affects me. Um, and so a lot of film noir. I, I shoot Muay Thai sometimes with very strong noir um, aesthetics around it and kind of explore almost philosophically what noir aesthetics and morality um, worldview might do to bring out qualities of Thailand's Muay Thai. Um, so the interesting thing is my still photography is really kind of influenced by cinema and so now I'm trying to like reach into um, Hi, it's so uncomfortable. Uh, reach into those tools that are used in film uh, and just try to capture something uh, that I want to do. So I think in my last film study, uh, I'm shooting right now, I've shot, shot a lot of slow motion, 200 frames per second and 240 uh, to explore slow motion um, video, which is pretty strong in this camera. But um, I started doing a little bit of jump cuts and um, crop close-ups, crop cuts. Um, and in this video, I really pushed that um, more. Um, I don't, how do I wanna approach this? God, there's so many things that I tried in this video. Uh, first of all, Sylvie's doing, uh, she's committed this year to what we're calling 3.0, Sylvie 3.0, which is like fights are very hard to come, will be very hard to come find for about a year. So we're like, screw fights. She's been fighting at a historic level, really. Nobody's ever really fought like her before. And uh, we're like, screw fights this year. If they come, they don't. Instead, just dive way into um, reformulating who she is as a fighter. Um, previous to this, she fought so many huge girls and she's a clinch specialist, so everything was really pretty much hold your breath, uh, citadel yourself on the outside, hop in, jump in, get in to the clinch, grab, lock, exhaust your opponent, grind them down, finish them off with knees. So Sylvie specialized in that last six inches of the fight space. And because of her size and because of a lot of things about her as a fighter, she um, made simple solutions to everything else. And what we're really interested in is like maybe the two and a half feet of fight space, the before the clinch grab. Um, so she's doing a ton of sparring, 10 rounds minimum a day. And one of the things she's doing is she's sparring uh, with Yod Kun Pon, uh, the elbow hunter of 100 stitches, who's incredible, not only as a fighter, a historic fighter, probably the best elbow fighter ever, but as a person too. Um, and it's this kind of like, it's sparring, but with a belly pad, she, um, he has a belly pad, so kicks can rip full power, and um, he is modulating the intensity. But what I wanted, so she's doing this every morning, um, half hour with him, I think six rounds. So to this today, I filmed one. I filmed one round because the intensity was pretty good. And to, just recently, we filmed with Arjun Surat of Dejrat Gym. So she's uh, she's actually picked up. Uh, it's the Pinson Chai. Pinson Chai was a very famous gym in the Golden Age and is still producing fighters, I believe. But the Pinson Chai arm swing, it's very traditional to arm swing down uh, like you're generating power like a runner in various ways. But the Pinson Chai gym um, had this <clears throat> very cool arm swing or non-arm swing where you basically keep the arm across your face and you don't swing it down. 
it makes you very defensively um, ready. It makes you fortified in the middle of your kick, so you're very hard to counter. Um, it gives your roop a great rigidity. Um, and so what happened was, we call it the Pinson Chai arm swing, but um, because the gym was famous, some of its fighters were famous for it, but we had just filmed with Arjun Surat um, at the um, Dejrat gym. He's a golden age crew, just tough as nails, incredible. He teaches the same thing, the, what we're calling the Pinson Chai arm swing. It's just kind of an old school arm swing uh, where you just keep the arm across the the um, the fa your face, the axis of your two faces you cross. So right now in sparring, this is a technique vlog that's about to go up or it's maybe already up, where she's talking about closing the door, which is after strikes and combinations to just, instead of return to a, a basic guard, to close the door with a long guard. And so the arm swing is happening, the Pinson Chai arm swing, and the closing of the door uh, basically to fortify, get Sylvie fortified in the fight space so she can live and breathe inside those two and a half feet when, you're, when your opponent kind of gets uncomfortable. Um, if you can breathe and then see in that two and a half feet, you have advantage, especially as a female fighter, over almost every female fighter in the world. Um, it's just where nobody trains and people don't spend a lot of time there. Um, in Muay Thai, in boxing, you live in that space. Um, so that's just some context for what I'm capturing here in this um, video, uh, this short round that I filmed. So she's really trying to get behind her shoulder as a defensive position and get that arm out, either closing the door or after arm swing. You can see it evolving in this round. So, oh man, there's so many things in this, in this uh, film study. So you're getting that. You're getting a fighter in evolution. You're getting a fighter who's going through something that really very few fighters get to go through, which is sparring. It's spar teaching. It's 90% sparring, but there's... He's also like, when you dance with Barishnikov, Barishnikov also is guiding you through beauty. Like even without words or anything, just by pressures or by uh, mimic my rhythm, feel my rhythm. Like there's a lot of kind of example setting by Yod Kun Pon just by who he is. So you kind of like rogue style, uh, steal the power, the superpower of who's in front of you. So. The sparring with Yod Kumpan, she used unsparring like this beautiful, like hour long sparring with uh, Karahat quite a bit. They're another elbow fighter. So there's the same kind of, the same kind of thing that she's, she's undergoing a process that f fighters really, Western fighters don't really get a chance to do. Um, it's kind of like guided sparring, although it pretty much is straight up sparring. You'll see also that Yokumpon delivers intensity. Like he's not hit, hitting full power, but in his mind and his heart, he's killing you. Like he's, he's really um, delivering this an emotional impact. And I think as a fighter, there's something really beautiful. One, it's only for real if he, if he feels those things. And the other thing is, is inspiring to have to feel that on the other end of those two and a half feet is a blessing because that's the that intensity is what you need to acclimate yourself to. It's the intensity that an opponent will bring after you wound them or piss them off or embarrass them. If you can acclimate yourself to that kind of like intensity and you, that's how Yonkin Pond does this thing, uh, it's a real blessing. So you're watching a fighter who's very experienced, Sylvie's very experienced, um, over 250 fights, just trying to mold herself to a new acclimation and fight space and technique and d these kind of defensive techniques. At the same time, mold herself to a legendary fighter and absorb, mimic, mirror, appropriate qualities that he has. Many of them will be done unconsciously. So 
There's something very beautiful about this. These sparring sessions really deplete her, challenge her emotionally. And so I also wanted to capture some of that, the like ups and downs, round to round, it's ups and downs. And then within a round, there's peaking of performance, flattening out of performance, the loss of Roop, which is your physical integrity. Like you're constantly capturing, recapturing yourself. And I think at the highest level, fighting is this. Uh, I think Bernard Hopkins said something about this, that fighting is about adjustment. And a lot of adjustment is recovering from a weaker moment into a superior moment. Uh, we call it, Sylvie and I call it getting back, getting back on the rope. It's like you can't stand on the rope the whole time. Even the greatest fighters, even Samart, Karahat, they fall off the rope, but they learn to fall in such a way as you might not notice that they fell, and then they get back on the rope effortlessly, and it creates a continuity in their fighting that is just so beautiful. So what's happening here is Sylvie's really working on her continuity. She's falling off the rope and getting back on the rope again and again, trying to like shorten those moments of obviousness. So anyways, filmed the, f filmed the thing um, this morning. XT4, um, I'm using, I decided to shoot with what I'm shooting now, which is the 56 millimeter uh, Fujifilm, I think it's 1.4. Uh, it is an absolutely stunning lens. It's magical. Michelle the Machine uh, on uh, Instagram uh, told me about this lens. Thank you. Uh, it is incredible for photographs. It creates this great depth of field because it's a very fast lens. But um, it's said to be uh, not great for videography or filming because it's an older lens. Um, so its autofocus motor is slow. Um, which means it will be slow to cat to retarget retarget and then um, at th as things are moving through the frame stay on the target retarget to the right frame and so it, it's thought to be slow X the XT4 just got I think it's called a 1.2 firmware update which improved its already better autofocusing algorithm so the XT4 autofocus is much better than any of the X series cameras did previously. So I was very curious. It's a, um, as a 56 millimeter lens, it's a port kind of a portrait lens. So it has a, a telephoto uh, aspect to it. And so I really wanted to, um, I wanted to take this, supposedly slow autofocusing, beautiful depth of field. I shot wide open at 1.4, is it 1.4 or 1.2? I don't remember. Uh, but wide open with great depth of field. And I wanted to get up on the action, like through that telephoto feeling. Uh, we just watched a movie called Demon Lover um, by the director who did Personal Shopper. Uh, he's a Oseus, I actually can't pronounce his name. I believe he's French. Um, but this film was really interesting because he would shoot right up on things with lots of beautiful camera movement and cuts. And he had this kind of rhythm, especially in the first half of the film, this kind of rhythm of where you couldn't quite track the action. And then he would land the camera on the point of the shot and then cut. And so I wanted to get this slower focusing lens. I wanted to use the out of focus moments to have an emotional quality instead of a lens that hits each target exactly when. This lagging autofocus, I wanted things to be out of focus. I wanted that to be um, playing with the, the actual depth of field that you're already experiencing. And so I wanted to kind of, and I shot it handheld without image stabilization uh, because I wanted a little bit of that uh, jerky quality. Uh, the the X-T4 has a really pretty good image stabilization built into the camera, which is one of the improvements. Uh, 
but this time I wanted to get that little bit of that human in the space feel. So I think you just watched it. I think all of that happened um, in just a great way. Like, I, it's not a great little film, but for the study, it happened the way I wanted it to. Like, these are the qualities I really wanted. Then, in the editing of it, I wanted to do these little jump cuts to communicate the emotions that are occurring within the ebb and flow of sparring, like when Yokumpon is just bringing it, right? So I wanted to, you'll, you, saw the, you saw the film, but like I wanted to play with cutting to slower motion. I think I brought it down to 16% and 45% of uh, the, the film rate, the natural rate. And so I wanted to cut to these slow motions and also to crop in. Also in cropping in, you get lower resolution. I shot in 1080, so I'm cropping in, lower resolution, you're playing with the focus change, and then, so you're, you're tra playing with tempo. Because there's always in sparring, there's these, there's the flurry and then there's the recovery and then there's the emotional dialogue that you're going through and judging yourself and there's there's the music you're trying to impose and then the music that's imposed upon you and so i kind of wanted these cuts these edits to do that and so i just went in again I, in other film story studies i've told you about this that uh, i was influenced by tarkovsky's theory of film editing which is that um, edits, shots are like pipes with water pressure in them. And so when you change a shot, you change, it connects to a different pipe that has a, ha, has a greater or lesser diameter or water pressure. So um, I'm dealing with something, when I'm editing it, I'm feeling like water pressure to me. Like how is time flowing? So I just look for these natural changes in pressure in the action. And then I try to change to a cut to communicate the change in the action. Um, I also was very happy with the color grading. Uh, I was, I shot it, I believe in Eterna in the camera, which is a nice cinematic soft uh, thing. Um, the next one I'm probably gonna shoot in F-Log. I'm actually shooting th this one in F-Log, um, this vlog part. I've never shot an F-Log before, but F-Log kind of like creates a lot of gradation. Um, it it enables you, when you manipulate the image after, to pull out differences in the gradation of light. So you have the most flexible um, negative, basically. Um, so when you when you get something in F-Log, then when you grade the color, which is change the color values and the intent, the, the contrast of uh, the video, you're like then shaping it in the way that like an Instagram filter shapes something. So this is one of the cool things is that you can shoot a video and then they have LUTs, L-U-T-S, uh, which are like filters that you can buy off the internet and download and they kind of like will give your film a color or a quality. Um, and they're subtle. They, well, sometimes they can be strong, but these are very subtle things that affect the emotions of what's going on. Um, so I work from two LUTs that I um, purchased. I don't remember where I got them, but this one is called Golden Age 2. There's three gradations, one, two, three of intensity. I like this one a lot. It has a golden yellow hue, but with blues, like some kind of richness in the blue. It's really nice, but I then graded off of it. I started with that as my base, uh, which was on top of the Eterna. And then I um, played with the blues and greens. I pulled the blues down in the shadows and pulled them up in the highlights. 
and then I did the opposite with the green values, pulled, pulled them up in the shadows and pulled them down. And it produced this, like the red, as you see in this, the reds and the blues really, really pop. Um, and it creates a visually dynamic sense of action, I think. It's very cool. And then the whole film has a kind of like atmospheric quality to it without it being like crazy um, weird or something. It still looks pretty naturalistic to me without like some filter LUT treatments go in this way and they get very kind of like um, 300 ish, like the film 300, in the sense that everything gets stylized like a graphic novel. Um, that's too far for me. But I was happy to do that. Um, and I think the result, I mean, it's just a film study. It's just me shooting something and pushing things. Um, it's a place for me to make mistakes in a way or to push things far enough so that I feel like that might be a mistake. Oh, and then the last thing, I added the music because the thing was not holding together in just the matter of my cuts and my crop jumps um, and the slow motion. I had a piece there, but it just wasn't holding together. And so I went to the YouTube um, audio library, looked, you, there you can grab things by genre or quality like ambient or dramatic or whatnot, you, the subcategories. And I found this little piece of music. It was a little bit grind, um, disturbing in a way. I don't know, maybe that's too strong of a word. But sometimes ambient, ambient music can be very calming, right? And it's very calm, it's pretty calm music for the first half uh, of the clip, um, which I'm happy with. And then the music changes, and I think it helps dig into the fatigue, mm, fatigue the, the stress of sparring with Yod Kun Pon. And Sylvie like riding the ups and downs of confidence, something working and then being overwhelmed or falling off balance slightly in a way that you're really trying not to fall off balance. So catching yourself, getting back on the rope, like the music, the kind of disson slight dissonance in the music created this thing that I thought was really cool. Um, and I, sl I stretched out the music in tempo towards the last part of the thing to create this more slightly, um, it's not ominous, but um, slight dissonant kind of feeling about it because that's what these rounds feel like. You like give your all and you're trying to work on, you have success, but they feel endless. And then you end the round and you go to the corner and you try to gather yourself and then the next round begins. And so there is this feeling of like, endlessness like the suffering will not end this kind of like almost buddhist feeling like you have to acclimate yourself to suffering and i think that's what sylvie's kind of doing with all this sparring is that it's like it's not like get good at it get comfortable only have fun it's like there's a degree of suffering that you just have got to sit in and have the feeling like this will never end i'm okay with that and i think that's also what's in this film a little bit um so I'm really pleased. I was surprised. To me, the autofocus on the uh, 56 millimeter lens is was actually really good. Um, the sensitivity settings I used were um, right for what I was doing. And again, I kind of like the disorientation of of the the shallow depth of field moving around with the action. If I did this again, I'd probably shoot it with um, Ibis the the image stabilization. Uh, that might, that would produce a less dissonant uh, film study. So maybe I would do that. Maybe I'd shoot it, I'd shoot it in F log and see what I could do with color grading a little more. But I'm pretty happy with it. Um, what I'm really interested in, in my photography, you take a look at Instagram or on Twitter. If you have questions, I'm on Twitter all the time now. I kind of moved away from Instagram and Facebook. Facebook's poisonous and uh, Instagram, you, there's not much of a conversation, at least 
where I am. Uh, so I've kind of gone over to Twitter to express myself more freely. Uh, so if you have any questions or anything, hop on over there. I'll put a link somewhere. Um, and uh, I'd love to discuss my thing. My whole thing is the Muay Thai of Thailand is like no other fighting art in the world. And how I photograph it and how, and now hopefully with a little bit of filmography, uh, like these studies are oriented, um, I want to bring out what's different than about it than anywhere else in the world. And I want to move away from some of the like um, burst beast mode type captures that are that typically come out of Thailand that for very good reason, Thailand fighters train like no other, fight like no other. But I think the cliches, which are truth, they're true because they're cliches because they're true. But the cliches about the sport here, uh, we've had enough of that. And there will be continue to have this other thing. I want to bring out the humanity of um, in the training and in the fighting. Uh, there's much about the humanity of uh, the uh, people come from poverty or um, they have... Uh, they, do, they don't have great um, life situations. I agree, bring that forward too, but I'm looking at uh, kind of for the humanity of the making of a fighter and being a fighter. Um, because in Thailand, Muay Thai and the culture, the subculture of um, the Muay Thai life is a very human life. Um, and so Sylvie coming at it as a Western woman, as the, the the Westerner who's fought more than any other time also has trained at in that world. And so that humanity is also something I want to bring out in her. She's uh, going on a path nobody has ever gone on before. And so also I'm hoping my filmography skills will develop so I can start to express that too. Um, very like, I don't know, it's very, it's encouraging that uh, it's difficult because I was very happy with what I did here, but I'm like nowhere near in terms of knowledge or experience of able to really handle that paintbrush. Um, so, uh, thank you everyone who supports uh, Sylvie through Patreon. And, or as a sponsor, an official sponsor, because you're also supporting me uh, and my photography and now my uh, videography is like the purchase of this equipment was originally designed so that we can um, give you much better Muay Thai library documentation. Uh, that whole documentary project of the great legends and crews of Thailand and their techniques wanted to just get better quality, gimbal supported, rich images, uh, so that in 10, 15 years from now, uh, it has a kind of staying power to it. So that's been accomplished. Now uh, we've expanded it to my photography and uh, these kinds of film studies. And so hopefully, um, uh, so the film, uh, there's a 30 minute, uh, um, length edit uh, or turn off on the camera because for overheating purposes. So um, I'm not sure what got lost there, but I'm going to reaffirm. Thank you everyone who supports Sylvie and myself uh, through Patreon because you've actually are the ones that made me a photographer, that, that I'm becoming a photographer. Uh, and now the work I'm doing with the, this film study and hopefully more expressive things through video. Um, I never dreamed that I would do this, but it became a responsibility, like almost an artistic responsibility that I've felt in having a beautiful camera, um, like the Fujifilm cameras, um, and the lenses and the editing, uh, software that, um, was necessary to do the projects of the Muay Thai library. So I have 
I basically feel like I have to live up to the potential of the technology that's in front of me. And so that's what this is about. But you on Patreon actually make this possible. It would not have happened uh, if we were just shooting with, with our phones, um, as we were at some point, I think, or other small cameras. Uh, so thank you very much. I look forward to the next film study. I'm not sure when it'll be. Um, see you then.